everyone welcome back to my youtube channel so this is part 3 of our dotnet full stack series so if you're watching this video for the first time then i will highly recommend you guys to go ahead and watch part 1 part 2 of this series before starting this video so in the previous video we have saw like how we can create a new project by using visual studio code and this is what we were uh, like having before we end the previous video so we were having one api project then we had three class libraries which is our application domain infrastructure layer and also we saw how we can create a uh, test projects as well inside this particular folder okay so one thing which was bothering me is that the name of this solution because we really wanted it to be like angular blog yt but this is still api so what i want to do i want to change it so what i will do right i will close this solution explorer and i can open up this one angular blog yt so this is how it will be in VS Code and this is Solution Explorer you get because of adding few uh, library, not the libraries but the extensions of VS Code okay. So now let me just go ahead and change the name of this API and uh, let me rename it to Angular Blog. So Angular Blog YT okay let's save the changes and then it should also reflect over here as well okay so now it has been changed to angular blog yt and now i have my src and test folder okay so most of you know that we are using clean architecture principle to make this um what we say the apis so what i will do right so first let's go ahead and try to like create all the necessary files and folders which will be required for us to do the api development okay so the first thing first i will start with the center part of our layer which i just showed you here so if you see right so i will be trying to touch this domain part and the domain part should keep two things two important things at the moment again we are not doing the domain driven design kind of thing so i'm not going to create the aggregate route and all that so that will also be included but not now because this is a beginner friendly video where we will first see how do we do the api creation and all that and once you guys are comfortable with that then i will increase one level above and then we will see what are aggregate routes where the objects and all that okay in the domain centric design so now first of all let's go ahead and create the folder in the domain so the first to create the folder right you have to click over here and let's give the name to folder as entities okay so entities folder is created and then another thing what i need in this folder is the interfaces okay so whatever the business logic whatever i have like the business interfaces which will be required for us to do the communication with the db i will be putting it over here so my interfaces will sit inside the domain so i'll create the interface folder okay and now inside this entities, I will have all the entities created. For example, as we are creating a blog project, so we will have a blog entity, a, a comment entity, role entity, user and user role entities. Okay. So that is what we will be creating inside this particular folder. Okay. Now let's go ahead and let's see what we will have inside the application layer. So in the application layer, right, first thing first, I'll start with a folder, which is the, my common folder. So suppose I will be making use of result pattern and that will be common across this particular library. So I will put them inside this common folder. So that's what it is, the common folder. Okay. And then I might have create the DTOs like the data transfer object. So I will create all my DTOs inside the application layer itself because as we will use result pattern so i know you don't know what is result pattern but don't worry i will explain you like first i'll show you the problem and then i'll show you the solution what a result pattern has okay but result pattern suppose i want to send a data so that data will be my dto data transfer object so i will explain you what dto is and why is it important once we will start with the api creation okay now what i will have right uh, i will try to document my errors right so for that reason i will be having errors folder okay so so that i can document all my errors related to my services okay uh, then i might have my extension so let me create a uh, extensions folder where all my extension will sit okay and what else i can have i can have some models as well i'll tell you about these models whenever we do the api calls right so we must have a request body and a response body so those kind of things i can store inside this particular model okay and the most important thing right i need the abstraction so for that i will create the interface and i will create my services 
okay so this is nothing but for my dependency injection right so that i can inject them directly and i can make use of them something like that because all my repositories will be injected inside this application layer and this services will be used whenever we do the api call okay so that's how it is all right now this is not just done right so as we will have the request response models which is coming from the front end right so for example user is sending email and username so we have to somehow do the validations of them right so the validation will be done inside a folder which is the validators okay so we will have all the validators folder inside this and inside this folder we will make use of fluent validation it's a very beautiful package okay we will be using that in our project to do all the validations okay and this is what i think i will be adding up in my application layer okay all these things uh, don't worry guys we will be uh, like writing all the files and everything from the next video but this is just important for you to understand that what all things are gonna come in this series okay so now we are clear about domain and we are clear about the application layer so in the infrastructure right what i will have i will have only two things i'll tell you what what are those okay so i will have the extensions for for example i can have my service collection extensions inside this so for that i will have extensions and i can also have a very important thing right persistence so all my persistence okay i'll tell you what what all things this folder will include okay so inside the persistence right i might have all the implementation of the interface which was part of my domain okay so the implementation will sit inside the infrastructure because infrastructure will be responsible for my db context for my database connections right as i told you right if you look at this layer right infrastructure this was responsible for external services and database calls right as you see here right in the infrastructure layer i have my db access okay so for that uh inside this persistent folder right i will make sure that i will have my configurations my db context my migration folders and repositories okay so let me create all those necessary folders repositories okay then i will have my configuration I'll create my context as well okay and in future whenever we will do the db migration right then there will be a new folder created inside this persistent that is migration okay and this is how we have completed this three layer folder structure whatever it will be included okay now let's go ahead and what is this api this is our presentation layer where this guy will consist of my controller extensions and middleware so whatever middleware for example i want to do a global exception handling okay i want to validate my um, what we say the validators or something like that so i can create all the middlewares inside this folder so for that let me create a folder middleware okay middlewares okay and inside this i will have also my controllers and if i need any extension so i can also have that over here extension related which can be used in this particular layer okay this is my presentation layer which has controllers extensions and middleware okay if there is any new requirement we will uh, we will be adding up so i will be doing that on the fly during the api creation all right but this is what the bare minimum folder structure looks like okay uh, as you might have be questioning me shashi why you have controllers we can do minimal api so i know right like lot of people are still not comfortable with minimal apis because i know still a lot of people are sticking with the controllers but what i will be doing in this series right first i will be creating everything inside a controller but in upcoming videos i will help you to understand how you can transition from a controller based project to a minimal api based project okay so currently if you see right this project has a single api endpoint this is my minimal api which is api app dot map get which is this weather forecast what you always get right whenever you create a new project so this is what you have at the moment all right and now most of you will be asking shashi you haven't told us how do you run things in uh, in like dot net project is there but we don't have that run and all that thing what you get into visual studio all right so to do things right what i always follow i make use of the cli okay so for example if i want to build my project what i do i'll just say dot net build okay dot net build and this will build the project for me and see the build is success with zero warning and errors okay now you must ask shashi how do you run the project so for running it is again easy right so what i'll just do there is a command we say dot net run and you have to specify the project okay so which what is your project and inside the project right you have src inside this src you have this api so i have to specify that inside this src slash api i have my launch profiles inside that launch profiles you have to use the https okay so this is the launch setting what i am actually talking about 
and uh, you know right you get different different ways to run your project in http in https in iis so this is what you can so this is what i have did here right so i have a dot net run command i specify the project what is my project like where is my api.cs proj file so it's inside src slash api and in that folder please make use of the launch profile and please start it by using https so this is what it is actually doing and this guy is coming over here and this will launch the url on swagger okay on this particular port okay so let's see if this command works okay let's go back and let's click on enter the moment i do this right it is building my project and can you see now it has been listening on this port 72 nine four on https if i open up this i can see a swagger url so to get the swagger URL, you have to go slash swagger and then you will be able to see the api project and if i click on get let's click on try it out and click on execute and can you see i'm able to do the api call here all right but uh, most of you like shashi then this is not a good way to do right because i have to do a lot to get my things done correct so is there any way by using GUI I can run my application like run my .NET project so the answer to that is yes so what you will do right you will have this debugger here on the left hand side run and debug okay so if you don't have you can install this extension from visual studio so it's very easy to do that to be honest uh, if you still want to know you can just follow this video like the setup of this visual studio like dot net into a visual studio kind of setup so you can use this setup to get this done all right now let's go ahead and use this thing to run our dot net project because we want to debug also right so let's take an example i want to debug this so for example over here right i want to debug so i can put a debug point over here my breakpoint okay and now i'll go here run and debug click run and debug and then you have to choose okay which is your what kind of pro pro programming language like you have you want to run so i'll say c sharp over here and then it will take all the profiles what was there inside the launch setting.json so you want to run it by http https you or you want it like the okay which project you want to run something like that it is asking so i will say that i want to run the https kind project here so if i click here then see this is building and running my application okay so now can you see it has been started over here and now i can still do the get call the moment i do get and clicked on try it out and execute can you see my breakpoint came on this line and i can do the debugging very easily from here so the moment i do this right so i can see i have a forecast with all this list of values and this will be this forecast value will be returned to the api can you see now again i got all the values so this is the way right we will be able to run the project okay and that's why i say that visual studio is there to help you guys and it's very lightweight it doesn't take that much time to load and and do whatnot okay so that's why i always prefer visual studio code to do my dotnet development all right so that's about my folder structure in this video so if you have any question clarification about this then you can let me know in the comment section if you have anything related to like uh, you're not able to run the project or if you have any kind of a question right you can hit me over on the telegram okay you can dm me there as well we will be like we will fix it together for you as well before even we start the project all right so that's it from this today's video see you guys in the next video where we will be creating our first api because currently if you see this api right this api is into minimal so we will try to convert a minimal api project into a controller based api okay so that thing will be done in the next video so until next time see you guys bye bye and keep learning